So in my 15 years of selling real estate, I found out that there are 10 reasons why homes typically don't sell. And this is after analyzing thousands and thousands of homes on the market, and I'd love to share them with you. So the first reason, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important reasons. And it's looking at most agents and sellers look at their home as a seller does and not like a buyer does. So typically what a seller will do or an agent will do is they'll look at their home, they'll look at what homes sold around that area, they find out the last few sales, they'll look at the square footage, the lot size, and then they'll price the house at that price. So like if someone says, we want to price our house at a million, and the house is really worth 800,000. I could, I'll tell them, you know, we'll price it at whatever you want to price it at. But when someone looks at your house, there's going to be six other houses that a typical buyer will like more than yours. So just looking at it through the buyer's eyes rather than the seller's eyes. Reason number two are price band errors. In case you're like, what is a price band error? Typically when most people look for properties, they're gonna be going on apps or online on their mobile. People, so say there's a property and the, the seller has an option of pricing it at 449 or 450. Most people will price it at 449 because they think it's a bargain. The problem is on these apps and these websites, the search would go from 400 to 450 and 450 to 500. So if you price your house at 449, the only people that will see it would be 400 to 450. The better potential buyers for your property that have a higher, a higher um, budget at 500 wouldn't see your property if it's at 449 because their band would be 450 to 500. So if it's at 450, both sides would see it from 400 to 450 and from 450 to 500. So number three are photo order. When someone goes to look for a house, typically you'll see only one or two photos of that home. And most people, most sellers, most agents, put the first picture as the front of the house and maybe they put the backyard or the side of the house. The problem is most homes, the best feature of the house isn't the front of the house. If they're only seeing one or two pictures and the best picture is like number 10 and you have an awesome kitchen or a great backyard, that person will never spend the time to find that picture of the house. When our team lists a home for sale, we'll spend an hour, hour and a half, picking our top five photos. And if the seller has the time, we ask them their opinion for the top five, and we find the pictures that really resonate with buyers. And the reason we pick five is because after someone looks at about five, they'll probably continue looking through. So photo order is definitely huge and one of the reasons why homes don't sell. So number four are violations and issues with permits and stuff. Most agents, most sellers don't check um, if there are any violations or open permits on their properties. And they, a lot of times, unfortunately, they find out right before they're closing. Either the title company or the attorney will tell them, hey, you know that deal that you're going to be closing next week? We have an issue with it. And some things could be done pretty quickly, but some things could take weeks or months. And if you have your, if you're a seller and you have your moving truck ready and you're buying another house and you're, you're selling and buying pretty much the same time, you're going to have major issues. So it's very, very important for your agent or title company, attorney or whoever it is, or you to do the research to find out if you have any issues up front because it can save you a ton of time and heartache later. So reason number five is most agents and sellers think they know social media really well and they feel that they can use this to sell homes. The biggest mistake that we see, my team and I see, is they give too much information on the property. And what happens is that person, that motivated buyer, never needs to reach out to that agent. So if we don't put the price and the location on a property and someone sees the pictures, they see a description and they like it, they're probably gonna reach out to us. Once they reach out to us, so say this house is in Miami, we didn't put the location, we didn't put the price and it's 500,000. The buyer reaches out to us 
and they're looking for a home in Miami Beach for 300. At that time, we would have other listings that we have and other properties that we know that are off market or coming on the market and we can help that buyer find another property. So by doing that, we're able to match people better. So number six is something that's crucial. Most people when they're putting their house on the market or it's an agent that's listing their house, they're excited about it, which is great, but they're too excited, meaning they don't take the time to prepare the house. They don't look at the details. So typically an agent will go to a house if they're taking photos and they'll go to the house the minute the photographer is there, maybe five minutes early to put the air on or whatever. When we go to a house, when Jade, Will, and the rest of the team and I go to a house, we go there an hour, hour and a half, half an hour early, depending on how big the place is. We make sure the house is perfect. We know that there's Photoshop and all, but we want to make that house look perfect from the beginning. And spending the time up front to get it prepared is crucial to a buyer when they're competing, when they're seeing competing homes against you. So reason number seven is probably something that you can definitely relate to. Everyone has a friend or family member who's in real estate, who's a realtor. And a lot of times as sellers, they feel obligated to hire that person or even a buyer to hire that person to represent you in your purchase. But if you think about it, this is probably going to be your biggest purchase in your life. And if you hire someone just because they're nice or because you went out to drinks with them or saw a movie, it's probably not the best thing that you're gonna do. So you need to interview agents, and more importantly, not just interview agents, you need to Google the agents. You need to Google whoever you're gonna think about hiring to sell your house. You need to check how they market. You need to see their videos, their photos. You need to see how they write the description. You need to check all of that because whatever they did in the past is probably what they're gonna do in the future for you no matter what they say. So number eight is not having the right network of buyers um, in your database. So most agents are pretty local. They say they may have a global network and global network would be someone that just knows someone online. Ask them to name eight people that they know and I guarantee you they're not gonna know anything. Our team spends pretty much 30-40% of what we do getting to know other agents because we know that they're probably going to be the ones bringing us buyers and by doing that we know agents in 57 countries know them not just say like hey I know John Smith no we know them we know their families we spend time together and by having this right pool of buyers from other agents it definitely helps a lot when you know them personally if you don't know them personally it does nothing but if you know them personally, it definitely will help get your home sold. So number nine is something all agents say that they use quote unquote professional photography or they do videos. The problem is you have to look at photography and videos like someone's wedding. We are your wedding planner. We're trying to create as little bit of anxiety for you as possible before you got married and you are gonna pick your photographer or a videographer. I'm pretty sure you didn't just hire the first one that you saw. In our 18 years, we've been spending a ton of time finding the best videographers and photographers, and we have a database of a bunch of them, but using this whole database, we are able to find the best of the best. So our pictures and videos will be videos and pictures that 10 years from now, you'll be excited about looking at. It's not just professional photography. This is awesome photography and videos and you'll be proud of them. So number 10 is poor accessibility to your property. And with so many properties on the market and as we go further in the future, there's gonna be more and more competition. And with more competition, you have properties that a buyer may tell his agent that they need to see five or six properties. And if they can see five or six properties and your property can't be seen that day and I have to tell them or another agent has to tell them, you know, we can't show it Wednesday, but we can show it Saturday at 10 a.m. They're just going to take across your property off the list. However you can do it, whether you need to have a friend 
or family member be there or you have to find an agent that you really trust when you're not at home, you need to make your home be accessible as often as it can, otherwise you will definitely lose a lot of deals.